on all of this. Bob Ballard, a renowned oceanographer and explorer, is joining us right now. Bob, thank you so much. We truly appreciate it. I understand, you know, obviously you were uh, part of the mission that discovered the Titanic, and you've been down there, I, I'm being told, on about 150 dives to the wreckage. Just want to get your take on the news that we're hearing breaking right now. Well, I didn't make that many dives. I made the first 12 that were ever made on the Titanic. And then I went back with remotely operated vehicles last time uh, in 2004. But yes, it's very tragic what happened. I, I, I know the people that passed away. I've known uh, Stockton for t uh, 20 years, and I know this was his dream. So my heart goes out to him and his family and the families of all the people who, who lost loved ones. This uh, tragic event more than likely took place on Sunday when they lost a connection with the surface. Uh, more than likely, they, uh, as they were ex ex experiencing difficulties, began to uh, uh, drop their weights and ascend to the surface. They never made it. So if you're on your way up and you're buoyant and you don't make it, it's a catastrophic uh, implosion. And I don't think people can appreciate the amazing energy involved in the destructive process of an implosion. Uh, I've explored the Thresher and the Scorpion, which were two U.S. submarines. In the case of the, of the Scorpion, uh, uh, ended up at a similar depth. And it just takes and literally shreds everything. So it's extremely powerful. And then that's what they'll be doing right now. Uh, they're now below the circulation system of the ocean in that area. So they'll do a systematic mapping, those ROVs can remain. I, I have one just like it, the one over my shoulder. Uh, Hercules is on my ship. In fact, you can see in the image, I'm in my command center. My ship's at sea right now. Unfortunately, we were unable to help because we're in the Pacific Ocean, uh, but it's a very simple, similar technology. And the beauty of these remotely operated vehicles is they can stay down days and days and days. So they'll be mapping all through the night and into the next day until they believe They've done 100% systematic coverage of the wreck site. And then the analysis of that database will start to tell the larger story. And Bob, since you are so familiar with the site of the wreckage and also these other submersible vehicles that, that go down and explore things like the Titanic, we've been reporting on, um, for a few years now, concerns over this specific vehicle, the carbon fiber titanium combination that essentially made up uh, the shell of this, uh, for lack of a better word. Did you have a sense initially when you first learned that the vehicle was lost that perhaps something catastrophic may have happened? Well, you have to understand that uh, we began taking vehicles into the deep sea with the historic uh, dive of the Thresher, I mean, the, the uh, Trieste in Challenger Deep in 1960. We've made thousands and thousands of dives with different vehicles, uh, whether they're French, whether they're Russian, whether they're American. Uh, and we've never had ever in the history of these extreme deep diving programs ever lost a, a vehicle. Uh, so this is a first. And, and so you naturally go to how does this vehicle differ from the vehicles that we've been using for many years? And it did, does, did have a very experimental hull, and obviously that hull imploded. And Bob, do you think, given what happened here, that there ought to be an end or at least a temporary pause um, to this type of tourism, to go see the Titanic wreckage while they sort out what happened? Well, you know, I, again, as you know, I was opposed to taking anything from the Titanic, but I've never been opposed to people visiting. Uh, as long as they do it in a safe way. Uh, we've gone back, Jim Cameron mounted numerous expeditions there. Again, uh, what's different about a submarine, for example, than an airplane. Uh, a, an airplane, gravity is your enemy. But if you have a deep submersible, buoyancy is your friend. All you have to do when you're in trouble is get light and you go home. And I'm sure they were attempting to get light and go home, but the hull itself imploded. So that's that's where you'll see all the energy focusing on any future regulations on, on safety. But again, 
I want to point out this has never happened in our deep submergence world uh, when, beginning from when we first started in 1960. And again, it's thought safer. If you look at our history, it's safer to be in a submarine like Alvin that I spent many years in than driving on I-95. Well, Bob Ballard, we certainly appreciate your insight and expertise on all of this. Again, we do remember five people on board, their families grieving um, as searchers now try to recover the rest of that debris. Bob. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.